Hi, I'm Linda Deer, the author of Guided. Her spirit guide angels were her best friends and life coaches. Guided is my true life story and winner of the 2017 International Body, Mind, Spirit Book Award. Since before I was two years old, I've seen, communicated with, and even photographed my spirit guide angels. In guidance, I use my own life as a template to teach you what I learned from these loving, intelligent spirits. More importantly, I show you how to make the connection in your own life with your spirit guides and angels so you can live a guided life, a life free of fear and doubt, the life you intended to live before you got here. We always showed you new things. I will take you back to the time in your young life when we did everything together. There was no separation between you and us. But people kept asking you questions about us. They asked you to explain it like we were separate from you or outside of you. We felt your disappointment. So let's get started. You felt irritated, but continued to explore what we were showing you. What started out as pure joy and wonder had now turned into determination. With your limited experience, this was how you decided to handle the pressure of always being asked what you were doing and who you were talking to. It was your attempt to do whatever it took to continue living in two worlds. This put a strong emphasis on the feeling of separateness. Until now, you had only felt this a few times. You did not have the capacity to consciously think any of this through. You were just defending your passion for everything you were learning and doing. Something that everyone here in this world seemed to have a problem with. They were interrupting your concentration with their demands on you. All of this outside pressure caused you to wander farther off, both geographically and mentally. You were expanding your worldly and otherworldly experiences. This is when you found peace. It's this time in your life that you remember what peace actually felt like. That's because you were completely present and your spirit was fully activated. You were connected and in the zone. Unlike those around you, you did not spend any time overthinking things. That's because you were too busy experimenting with them. Learning like you did was easy and fun. Although the people around you were questioning you more than ever, you defiantly continued to follow your bliss. This was the first time you stepped out of the flow and into the fight. Your fight to continue living in two worlds. The natural flow that made learning on a higher level possible in the first place was now in jeopardy. What came so natural to you was something that you had to work at now, but you did it anyway. Because of your need to hide what you were experiencing, you began to feel stressed. This was caused from the constant pressure being imposed on you by those around you. They weren't interested in what or how you were learning the way you did. They were just focused on getting you to do what they wanted without resistance. Compared to the way you were learning in our peaceful time together, this felt irritating. 
We never taught you anything. We just presented you with events that ignited your curiosity and set you on your journey of self-realization. As we showed you new things, you reached for more. And through your inspiration, you taught yourself what you were learning. Contrary to this higher way of learning, in this world, you were being forced to learn. There was no tolerance for self-realization. In this world, you had to learn the way everyone else did. In comparison, this was a humiliating way to be treated. Acclimating to this world while attempting to secretly hold on to the otherworldly life that was so dear to you was becoming complicated. There was little or no appreciation for it here in this world. You weren't entirely sure about how to handle all of this as you tried harder so you wouldn't get in trouble. The flow that turned into a fight in your attempt to hold on to your higher learning time with us was wearing you down. This wasn't even something you could explain, but you weren't willing to give up either. All right, and we have Ray Holly here. The man behind the curtain. And he's handling the stream. You guys, if you have questions or you have comments about what we're talking about today, the subject matter for my guided journey. This is uh, number seven in part two that we're talking about today. Feel free to do that by clicking on the video where it says click for more. And when you do that, it'll open up a new window that will allow you on the right side to leave your comments and questions and we'll answer those, okay. Okay, that was very good. Because I remember when I was little and I had imaginary friends and I learned through experimentation that it was fun. But pretty soon people start asking you questions, you know, uh, that you really don't understand. Why are they asking me those questions, you know? And, and they really start to irritate you. I guess you don't understand them, why they're asking before they irritate you. And what kind of questions were these people asking? Is that a question to me, Ray? Yeah, it is. Okay, so when you, what's your question to me, exactly? Well, Can what kind of questions were these people asking and why were the questions so confusing? Did, don't they remember? Okay, okay, so here's where Ray's going with that. Um, what he's asking is when, as adults, they, adults will ask the child, the baby, the toddler, the, the, the new person, all right? They'll ask them, what are you doing and who are you talking to? And the first feeling that you have in you is, why would you ask that? What's that got to do with anything? Don't you remember? Aren't you part of this? Don't you get it? The ki that's where the baby, the toddler, the, that new person is coming from. They're almost looking at you like, you've got to be kidding. I can't believe you said that. But of course, they don't have the reasoning to think like that, right? So that's really what's going on. And when they ask you the question that they're asking you, they're trying to make sure that you're okay. I, I remember how that... I remember seeing how people did this in my adult life as they imposed that thought or that interrupted that child with that question. And the, and the, the whole point to it is that they don't remember. I mean, the child can't even answer. It's a ridiculous thing to ask a kid, a little kid, a little child, because how they can't even really communicate that. So why would you even ask that question in the first place? That's where we as adults need to pull back and go, hmm, let's study what that child's doing. May, you know, let's check this out and let's be patient with the process and, and really see what that child is doing and play with them in that wonder. Like it's like you are one with them, like you're not making them move into separateness by intruding on their, on their experience, what they're experimenting with 
and and causing them confusion, it's a ridiculous question. The kid can't answer that question. They, they couldn't if they tried. They're they not don't know any to, different. They don't know any different. So the only reason that that would even come up is if you're trying to correct them, okay? And that that's where things start to go off track because the kid recognizes, even though they don't have the logic over here, they have the knowingness that they came in with over here that they don't, they know it. When you know something, you don't question it. So they know it and they don't question it. And that's always the right thing and that's always the truth. Over here, everything's up for grabs. I mean, anything can be challenged over here or debated. So that's, what, that's what's going on and that's what needs to change. They're, they're questioning their knowingness that they came in with. Who's they? People, your okay. parents, normal parenting well, and they don't, society gets in right. the way. They don't, they don't recognize <clears throat> it as your knowingness though, Ray. Right. Or they wouldn't do something like ask that question. They're just doing what, was ha what happened to them. They're repeating it. Right. Okay, it's a cycle. Right. We have to get off that cycle. We can't accept that as okay or just good enough. It's not. It's, it's a ridiculous thing to even ask or say. It really is. Well, it seems to get worse as they get older. The guides mentioned that uh, all of this outside pressure causes you to wander away, wander farther, because now you're mobile. You're around two years old and you, you're walking around, okay? Right. You aren't just sitting in your, in your room or laying in your crib talking to somebody. Now you're mobile and you're wandering off further. You can go out in the yard, you can wander around in the yard. And um, geographically and mentally, they said you're wandering further. So now when people interfere with that, you know, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? Don't do that. When it's natural for you, you have a reaction. Right, you can take action. Now that you have the capability of taking action because like Ray said, you've got mobility, you can walk now. You know, you can crawl or walk, you can move. And you can move out of that little space that you were confined in, as a, that little space as a baby, and you can move into a larger arena. So you do, you go out and you hit your bounds, you know, you, you go as far as you can in that boundary, in that area of permission. And, um, and you do do that, and when you do that, you feel like a freedom hit you. You don't feel like you're being, you know, watched so hard. You don't feel like, you know, everyone's concerned about you so much. After all, you were a baby, you know, and they're, they just want to make sure you're okay. But in doing that, it felt repressive, confining as you got older and more mobile. You took yourself out, and that's where I talk about about the part where that's the first time you really find peace because once you're mobile, you can go out into the, into the backyard and play, you know, in the sandbox or play with the dog or, or just do little things, play with your little cars or your little dollies or whatever. You have that time out. Your parent, they, they're watching you from the house, but you're okay out there by yourself. Well, when you're okay out there by yourself and you've got more distance from that, from that constant supervision you you feel relieved and that's when this communication and this connection and this wonder and experimentation really takes place it really gets large that's when it happens yeah and, and you mentioned you're given permission to do things well you're also refused permission to do things like don't ever do that or you'll get a spanking or don't you ever cross that road or you'll get a spanking so now there's threats involved I mean, if somebody said, don't you ever cross that road, but weren't clear about why, why you shouldn't cross that road, wouldn't you want to cross that road? Okay. Right? That's where it's almost a setup for disaster. Because now, especially as the child gets older, two years old, you know, mm -hmm. something like that, that's when the child starts to go, they put their hands on their hip <laughs> and they go, no, and, and they, they fight you because they, they need to explore they need to know why. They don't need to be told what to do. They need to understand what they need to know, all right? So we as parents, what happens to us as adults is we're under so much pressure. We've got work, we've got, you know, maybe other kids. Uh, we've got uh, 
we've got to pay the bills, we've got responsibility, you might be an only parent. I mean, all kinds of pressures on you and society's pressure. So when you put all that pressure on you, how can you take that moment out to, to watch what the child is doing, play with them in their world, hear what they're saying, listen to how they're learning, watch what they're doing, and then participate in that. Feel, make it a oneness event instead of a separation where you're telling them what to do instead of involving yourself with what they're doing, all right? So that's the whole key. The more, the earlier you start doing that, the sooner we all start doing that. And I know time is precious. That takes time out of your life to do it, but that's what's required. Especially the younger they are, the more important that is. You've got to do it. Or the child, in a short period of time, that child won't even respect you because it knows that you didn't take the time. It knows you cheated. It knows you took a shortcut. You didn't have time for them. So they don't have time for you. That whole thing starts that defiance. So you don't want that to kick in. You don't even want them to come up with that idea. You want them to, to, to enjoy your company and respect you because you respected them. So the parents don't understand a couple of things. They don't first of all, they don't understand why you're acting the way you are as a child learning things. They don't understand what they're doing to the child. They don't. By, uh, they're, criticizing them, threatening them, that's right. uh, punishing they're, them. They're trying to protect the child. Spanking them. But that's not doing it. The other thing is they don't understand why the child is reacting to what they're doing. They even have a name for it. The child's throwing tantrums. What are they? The terrible what? Yeah. The terrible twos. They have a name for it. And, and it's almost like it's something all parents should expect. Your child hits two years old, and now they're going to be terrible. But they don't understand that they were the cause of it. Child didn't do anything. Didn't want to do anything different. Well, they they were they they instigated it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's natural for the child at two years old, whether you're you're their friend and you you play with them and you take that time with them and and you respect what they're about and you learn from them, you watch what they're doing and really get to know who this new person is. You take the time with them, okay? They still are going to have those moments where they go, no, you know, no. And it's because they've heard you say it to them, right? No, don't put your hand in the flame. I mean, you're gonna, you got, you got to do the parent job. You have a tough job. Being a parent's hard. So you're the bad guy. It's hard to be a parent because you don't want to be the bad guy, but you know, you, sometimes you can't help it. So you get the parent job, you get the bad guy job. Um, so that comes up. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. So the kid's gonna do that just by the nature of it's feeling its own uh, self. It's feeling its own power. It's feeling its own um, uh, importance, its uniqueness. It feels, it's feeling itself. And when it feels itself, it, it it grabs onto it and it's going to protect it and it's going to do what it wants to do because it hasn't had the freedom and liberty to express that before. So like the little child, it's going to not be real eloquent about how it expresses that and when it first comes out. So it's it's the little child doing its best to perform on that, to, to reach into that, to be that, to live it, okay? And then it's about, you know, letting them work with that, letting them move into that without letting them be a brat at the same time. Sometimes that can get carried away. But just go, you know, wow. And get in there and watch what they're doing and say, how did you figure that out? And, and just really give them the kudos because that's where they're going to love and adore you. They need to be accepted, all right? And they need leash. You need to let the leash out. You let the leash out, let them scrape their knees, you know, bump their elbows, you know, whatever, but let them do it while they're young because it won't get easier as they get older. The risks get higher and the consequences get greater. All right. So let them, let some leash out, let them know you trust them, you know, have, a, have the ability to pull back in in case they jump out in front of traffic or something like that. But, but give them some room and let them make some mistakes. They've got to do it. That's how they're going to learn. That's how you did. That's how you learned.
it's interesting that there's like two times. Let me say this one last okay. thing, Ray. The whole point in doing this Facebook Live and talking about this subject matter is and working with the journal, My Guided Journey, uh, which is, by the way, free. It's a free download on my website at lindadeer.com. Be sure to get it. The whole point to that is the whole point to this subject matter is to get you guys back on track with your life, to go back to that earlier time in part two, to that earlier time in your life, page one through 18, as I walk you through this, utilizing each video for each uh, part, all right? Um, for each page, eight, one through 18, to help you go back to the beginning and realize by, by remembering how, the, how you got off track, talking about how you raised your own kids, remembering what we're talking about here, and then going back to that early part in your life and going, oh, I see where I got knocked off my course. I see where the people around me unwittingly didn't really mean to do that, they were really just trying to make sure I was okay, looking out for me, you know, and all that. They were overkilling it, you know, that that you made some early decisions that caused you to have a less than fulfilling life now because you made decisions ill-equipped, really. You had no experiences to make those decisions from, yet you made them out of fear, out of not wanting to get in trouble, out of, uh, um, if, you know, not knowing what to do next or worrying about what they might say to you next. Are they going to ask me again? Are they going to ask me who I'm talking to? Are they going to wonder what I'm doing? Am I doing okay? Am I, am I okay to do this? You're, you're going to be filled with doubt and filled with fear, which is usually what those people around you who raised you, taught you uh, as you grew up, were consumed with. But they called it caring. They called it looking out for you. So the whole point to doing these Facebook Lives on Thursdays is to, in helping you remember the baby, helping you remember the toddler, the, 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 the adolescent, the, the whole thing is to get you guys back to where you were so you can document it in this journal, realize and recognize and have it there so you can reconstruct your life. You can't know where you're going unless you know where, where you've been. So you've got to do the work to, to rewind your own life and get back on track, all right? So not only do we have to maybe be, definitely be more co conscious about the way we handle our kids, our children, our grandkids, but we have to get back to the early part of our life and do the work so we can get our lives back again, all right? That's the point to this, all right? Okay, today what we're talking about is we're talking about number seven right here. And this is a little boy pulling a stick along a, a water bank, kind of looking down at it, just dragging it along, you know, in contemplation. Uh, this is like a walking meditation right here, what this little guy is doing, because he doesn't have much going otherwise, you know, going on around him besides some of this interference from this, from the adults, right? But this is where he takes himself out of bounds, like we were talking about, geographically uh, and mentally, takes himself away from all the, the pressure from the adults. And he, and he finds himself in his own little walking meditation, his contemplation. And this is where the guides come through and communicate with the child perfectly. And that's what they did with you. That's what this is designed to do. This is designed to wake you back up and help you remember. I remember this and I remember what happened and I remember how that felt and I remember how I got off track and I remember what knocked me off track. I remember when that, I remember, I could smell it, taste it. I remember, remember seeing it, where I was, who was there. You will remember everything. It will come back to you quickly. So, but you've got to write it into, the little, into this little journal here and push, push through each page through each event in your life, there's 18 of them. And so Ray's talking about the part where two years old, the early part of this journal, two years old, when you first experienced limitations being imposed upon you, all right? That's very similar to what you can expect from that child, from that behavior at two years old, what they're gonna do as a teenager, 
at the beginning of their teenage years. Not as a teenager, but as they just begin to move into it. How they rebel, how they how they won't listen to you, how you know, how they fighting for their life, so to speak. This little two-year-old fought for its life. It's fighting to keep, it wants to keep living in two worlds. It doesn't want to just be forced to choose this one. It wants to hold on to this one. It loves this one. It's where it came from. It doesn't want to give it up with all this pressure to perform over here. After all, they're two, three, four, five years old. When are you going to wake up? When are you going to get with it? That type of thing. That's what they that's what they rebel against, all right? So as teenagers, when they first enter their, those teenage years, the hormones kick in. It's like something possesses them. <laughs> Just like at two years old, something seemed to possess that child, you know? And so- Became a little tired. <laughs> a little, you know, something happened there, but nothing happened there. You just have to, it's a critical time to pay attention and to be on their side, no matter what. That's what it takes. That's who you have to go back to in your own life of self-discovery and uh, self-realization right here in the journal and reconnect with that part in your own life so you can gather yourself back up again, he do the healing that needs healing, patch those wounds back up and put yourself back together again, okay? So now things really start to make sense in your life as you move forward, you will you will see you will just experience things completely differently, but you will move slowly. You will you will as the, at this point in your life as an adult, as you work through this and you start using this, you will realize that what you do it can't be you can't go 100 miles an hour. You've got to pull back, slow down, and let the self that you became catch up to the self that you just realized was laying dormant all these years, all right? That's what this is about. Go ahead, Ray. Okay, something else the guy said kind of upset me. They said, contrary to this higher way of learning from them when you come into this world, you were being forced to learn now. Somebody's forcing you to learn now. It doesn't, it's not natural like you experienced it when you got here. Doesn't this uh, become painfully obvious once you enter school? What is this? Forcing a okay. way, forcing okay. to learn something in a certain okay. way that okay. is Here, not natural. Okay, here's what it feels like to the child. It feels like they're being told what to do. It goes back to that. And your guides never tell you what to do and they never teach you anything. What they do is they present you with events that you are perfectly aligned to learn at that particular time in your life, all right? And you have free will, even as a baby, you have free will. You come into this world with that gift of free will. And you take your free will and you decide to either move on it and, and explore it and experiment with it, or maybe do it later, that type of thing. Okay, so either way, you learn when you work with that, when you play in that, and you just and you and you and you wonder, you ask your own self questions about what do I do now? How do I make this go there and do this over there and, and all that? You learn far more than you ever would by being by being forced to learn, which equates in the child's mind the feeling they got being told what to do. All right. They just will go just like this and rebel again. They don't like it. It's not natural. It's not how they learn. It's not fun. And the way that the guides present things to you so you can teach yourself, self-realization, right? That's why it's so solid. That type of learning is so solid because you realize it. It's not somebody preaching and teaching you something and telling you what to do. You have to get a certain score, and you know, what kind of score did you get compared to the other kids in the comparison game? That's all the separation. That's not natural for the kid, and the kid knows it. So that's why the kid will rebel, all right? The other kids, what the other kids did that perform in that arena where they're told what to do, and they're um, forced to learn, 
and they get straight A's, okay? Those kids, they just learned how to conform right from the beginning. What they're gonna run into, those guys who go back to the beginning and, and re-investigate their life and remember what happened and see where that all started, they're gonna find that part of themselves that caved in and um, because they were more afraid of getting in trouble than they were in, interested in what was presented to them so they could explore it, okay, and learn new stuff, because they were more afraid, okay, they were uh, compliant. They were, but late, at some point in their life, that's gonna work against them. At some point in their life, they're gonna go, you know, I'm tired of being nice all the time. I'm tired of be, trying to be liked all the time. I'm tired of, um, of being stepped on and not appreciated. You know, because I, see, I do everything over the top right better than anybody else. I do it on time. I do everything right. And they just expect me to do that all the time. And all of them, they goof off. They get to seem to get away with the stuff I could never get away with. That's where this comes back in. It catches up to you. So you can't live a life that's out of balance. That's the whole point. We're in this world. Yeah, we've got to acclimate to this. This is, we decided to come here. That's the consequence of being here. You've got to acclimate to this. But you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't throw this away just because pressure's put on you to, to comply and, and, and acclimate over here, all right? Well, the way, that, the way you learned when you came into this life, and, and if you were forced into uh, sit up straight, fold your hands, and this is how you're going to learn, this is how you're going to repeat it so you can get a grade, so you can get into a good college, so you can get a good job and make a lot of money, and then have your own kids and you can ruin them. Uh, somewhere along that line, you, like you said, you remember that it wasn't like that at the be in the beginning. You get this... Is that the hole in your soul that you start to feel when you're in your 40s and 50s and know that there's more to this life that That's you right. never really found out who you were? That's when they start asking themselves, who am I and why am I here? Right. Ray's right. That's exactly right. That is the hole. Yes, it is, Ray. This is the full, the full range right here, the window. Let's say the hole in your soul is only this deep because you, you got pushed around a little bit, you know, you complied, you caved in a little bit, but you didn't totally cave in, all right? So you know, you get this, all right? And then some of you went farther down the road and there's only a little piece of you that's kind of like panting for air, trying to stay above water, trying to survive this, trying to keep itself alive, but what is it? I mean, do I really want to go there? I mean, it's there. It's, it just depends to what degree you, you, you pushed it away, okay, this side. So all you're doing is you're taking that. We all have something there where, where, we, where we missed it or where we got, we got scared, all right? Or we wanted to be liked or whatever it is, okay? We wanted to be the best in the classroom. We wanted to win that trophy so bad. Okay, whatever that was, okay, go back. Find it, claim it, write it into the journal, no matter what. Just do it. You only have to do it one time. And once you do it, you purge it. You, you now have, you, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And once you know where you've been, you truly know, you've documented it. You watched all these videos. You've read through the journal. You've slept on it. You, you, you were careful when, before you write, wrote it all out. You were true to yourself. You told the truth, all right? It's not meant to hurt anyone's feelings. The truth is the truth, right? Once you do that, the hole in your soul will be healed. You will have healed what prevents you from living your life fully. That, that's why we're doing this. That's what this is all about. So no, there's nobody who's who's... Everyone has a bit of a hole in their soul, Ray, we, yeah. where we left it on the table. That was really good, what you talked about. But, but it's all there to be healed. That's why this was created. That's why this is free. The guides, when I, went, when I wrote this and put this together, they said, no, Linda, this is a work in progress. 
We want this to be a free download on the website for everybody who wants to work through this and get their life back. That's what this is for, all right? That's why we did this. Okay, getting your life back means you have to change something. You may have to change a lot or a little bit. But when you're at your 40s, your kids are roughly teenagers at that point, okay, uh, or 50s, you've established a group of friends who are just like you. So what happens to your other friends when you start changing? When you start asking yourself, who am I and what am I, do what am I doing here? What should I be doing here? What do, you, what do those other friends say? Well, it goes back to if you're worried about what your friends would say, it goes back to why you do this work. In part two, page one through 18, and we're on page seven right now that we're talking about this tonight. It goes back to if you feel that, then that, that's the hole, okay? That's where you need to go and do the healing. And the healing happens when you document what really happened so you can reclaim your life back again. You can move forward with this new understanding, this new, it's not a person who's angry. It's not a person who thinks they got cheated. It's not a person who's a victim, none of that. That's the last thing you get from this. If you have any of those feelings, it's because you carry them with you right now. Working through this will release you from that. That's all I can say about that. So nothing will stop you. In fact, once you work through this and you start using this in your day-to-day -day life, part three is the journaling. It journals your, where you write in your dreams or your insights or your gut feelings or somebody came up and said something to you out of the blue and you went, wait a minute, that was guidance. Or you heard a song that you hadn't, or, or started humming a song you hadn't heard in 30 years, all right? That's guidance. They're trying to tell you something, all right? So that that's what that is. It's you getting yourself back. And the people around you will watch how you change, how you become more present. When they talk to you, you're present. You're not thinking about a zillion other things that you have to do. You're present. You're different. That's the way, that's the way you wish it could have been when you were two years old, when you were a little kid and the people around you were living in chaos and all, every, everyone would run into work and the phones were ringing and, oh, there wasn't enough time, gotta go shopping, gotta wash the clothes. But everything was chaos, all right, as they raised you. And they really didn't have time to be present, okay? This is about now you finally have that time to be present and work through what happened back there and reclaim your life so you can live the life you intended, that's what this is about. That's why we do this. It's not about chastising yourself for, I, I should have done a better job with my kids. I, 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 should, have, I should have done a better job in my marriage. I, I, should have done, been, I should have done a better job at my job. I, I, didn't, I didn't seem to have the capacity. I broke down too fast. I cried too fast. I, 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 I was exhausted too fast. I, I was I ran out of gas. I didn't know how to do it. I I wish I I wish I knew. Okay, but this is how you do it. You you do it here, you rebuild your life, and then when your friends go, you know, you're different, and you go, Yeah, I know. And and they go, What's what happened? How how did you get yourself together? How did you get this right? You could tell them about guided. You could say, I read this book. This book changed my life. This book is what got me going. And then I went on to Linda's website and got my guided journey, the companion journal to guided. And I started working through my process, like Linda explained how it works. And that's how I got my life back. It was really not that hard, but I did have to do the work. I had to get in there and I had to tell the truth like it happened. I couldn't make it up. I can't nice it up. I gotta say it like it happened. Some of it might be wonderful. You just don't have anything unnice to say because it was awesome, all right? And some of it isn't. But you gotta say it like it happened in order to clear 
up the fog so you can get back to living your life, the life you intended. The, this is why you came here. Don't waste your life. That's what this is all about. And you probably shouldn't expect all your friends to be happy that you've changed. They are a work in progress, just like you were before you started, all right? So you know what? Just let it go. Just let it go. They, they may come back and go, you know what? I'm working through my stuff, or I'm, I'm getting this, or I get what you're doing now. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm working through it. I like this, you know? So everybody gets it. It just depends on when. We all get it. But you know from your coaching session, you're not new at this. I mean, people come to you with their personal uh, issues and problems when they want to change. They want to change so badly, they know they, that there's more that they can do in this life. And uh, they don't want to miss it. They don't want to miss it. They want to fill that hole in their soul, but their kids are not cooperating with them. Their spouse is not cooperating with them. Their friends are not cooperating with them. The people at work think they're weird. And they already think you're weird. Right. They already don't cooperate with you. They already think all those things that, that Ray just talked about. So what do you have to lose? That I mean, that's... That's not an excuse. That's, that's something that you can expect to feel if you're going to follow this They're path. They're doing it anyway. As soon as you step into this path, and you start investigating your own life to get it back, what you're going to realize is that they were saying all those things anyway. They were thinking all those things anyway. They're going to think them and say them anyway. They're not going to get worse. They're not going to get better. But you know one thing that's going to change? I know because I, I have lived it. What they're going to say? I don't like her, but I respect her. There's a lot of people who don't like me. In Guided, it talks about it. I talk about the consequences of me stepping into my power, mm. of me being who I am, of me following my bliss. I talk about it. I tell the truth. This is a very transparent, true life story about the guides and how they saved my life, guided me, and how the people around me reacted. All right? It didn't stop me. This will show you. This will show you how I did it. And that they said the same things they would have said, whether I did it or not, except they respected me. So that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Some of them, even the ones that were, that were working against me, some of them actually turned their lives around. They went, you know, I like, I like how Linda's life has shook out. I want that. I got to see what she's doing because even though, you know, I, they're jealous of me or whatever, and that's really what it is, you guys. They they pay attention and they don't want to hurt anymore. They don't want to be in pain anymore. Whatever you do, don't rub it in their face, all right? Don't. Just just leave them alone, and if, they're, if they need a little help or they need some to want to talk to you, talk to them with your heart, okay? And forget about the nasty things that they said or whatever and try to help them now if they're if they're a troublemaker or they're dangerous keep them at a distance and some of them may be just so untrustworthy or conniving that you may not be able to let them that close i have some of those in my life i can't let them near me but because they try to sneak back in there because they know i have an open heart they know i give everyone more chances okay but not once not once they've shown me you know, for 40 years that what they intended, their intention is not good. I just can't have it. I, I don't have time for it. So there comes a point where it's, they push you too far and they you know that they're not honorable. They're still going to get it, you guys. They're just going to get it in their own time, their own place, whenever they're ready to do that. So just, you know, wish the best for them. But, you know, don't set yourself up for a fall. Just don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. That's that's a hard thing for people to not do. Because what happens is you've been hurt, you hold on to the grudge, right? And it it you take it personally. It that's what it comes down to. But when you take it personally, what it does in your life, you're moving along, you're moving along, boom, it stops you cold. 
You can't move any further because you're stuck in victim, being a victim, being being picked on, and, and you're, you're stuck. You can't move and continue to fluidly move forward. You can't do it if you're stuck in taking it personally and being hurt and wanting to get even or whatever it happens to be. It doesn't, it doesn't flow. It doesn't flow. I mean, it's amazing uh, how there's all these organizations for victims of child abuse. They call themselves victims of child abuse. They're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. They still see themselves as a victim of something that happened in their childhood. There isn't any organizations I've ever found that are uh, like recovered from that child abuse. I am no longer a victim. That's, I never was a victim. I didn't take it personally. That's the difference between what Ray's talking about and what this is about, all right? Doing the work. And you're, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna gravitate toward it, that's all. You're not going to need it anymore. You're not going to need it anymore. I mean, it was pretty clear from your situation uh, that you endured 16 years of horrible physical, mental, and psychological abuse before you could escape the family. And how, how did the family react when three years later you were a self-taught success? business success they wanted what I got they 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 wanted some and they all talked behind my back all the time I was the number one thing the rumble in the house okay I was the number one thing that they talked about I got all the attention <laughs> well all the attention was you abandoned our family yeah but Ray it, it, it just, see how you have to get over that, you guys. Ray's throwing some emphasis out there so that you guys will re you'll remember what it feels like. You know what that feels like. To feel that edge on you, and this is what it feels like when you're free from it, all right? That's what it feels like. So it's calm, it's steady and true, it's clarity, all right? You can't have the clarity when you have that rough edge. You right. can't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if somebody abused me for 16 years, I'd have a rough edge. But in those 16 years, with the guidance of your guides, you learned not to take anything personally, see things as what they really were. But when you got out of that family and three, four years later, you were a phenomenal success. It was something that the family never expected. You caught them off guard. You just continued to be yourself. Well, you they, were just away from them. What they did is they set me up for failure. Right. That's what they did. And because I didn't relate to it, I had, I've always had this relationship with my spirit guides and angels throughout my life. They've always been right there every single time. That's why I wrote this book. I wrote this book and it explains exactly how this works, which, which created this. So you can understand how it works in your life. Okay, that's that was the difference, Ray. I, I had them with me. I talk about it and guided. I wouldn't have made it through my life, and I wouldn't have wanted to without their help, without their direction, their guidance, their the intuition that came through, always coming from them, broadcasting to me. That that communication bridge was wide open, is wide open. And I connect with it every day, every single day, all the time, right? And I follow the guidance. It doesn't always make sense. It, what I might think I want to do or should have done, sometimes it's, it's totally different. And I have to pull back, breathe, because I put a lot of energy into whatever that was, and, and really let it go so I can open up to what they just showed me. So guidance it's it's it makes all the difference in the world but you can't really be reached until you work through part two page one through 18 and we're on seven right now that we're talking about to to wake you back up again to bring that back on up to the surface okay so you can document that hidden knowledge that's what you're going to be doing you're going to bring it back to the surface you're safe no one can hurt you if you have people around you that don't support you, don't show this to them. Work through it on your own, in your own quiet space. 
but do it in your quiet space. If you have to get in your car and go drive somewhere to write in there, then do that, all right? All right, so next week, same place, same time, we're gonna be talking about... Number eight. Number eight, you became cautious, okay? So the child that we talked about today, the you, the child, hold on, Ray, is, um, is kind of just leading up to that, the story, the kind of, you know, what we talked about today, how I opened this Facebook Live, and where you were at that time in your life, just before you became cautious. We're gonna talk about and talk about the little story about what that felt like for you at that time in your life so you can document what that was, what your experience was after listening to that video, okay? But first, you have to download My Guided Journey off my website so you have it, okay? Okay, so All right. I have written a series of videos in support of the readers of my guided journey. The companion journal to my flagship book, Guided. Each week on Facebook Live, I talk about your journey back to the beginning when you first made contact with your spirit guides and angels. They haven't gone anywhere even when you ignored them or didn't realize they were there. In these Thursday Facebook Live videos with me, you learn how to journal your hidden knowledge, documenting your life journey, revealing who you are and why you are here. When you follow this, you not only get your life back, but you will never doubt yourself again. See you next week, same place, same time.